fishy friends and welcome back to another stay fishy adventure today back by popular demand is a 36 hour tiny island challenge and today we're doing it a little bit different it's actually going to be a survival challenge that was the number one comment on that 24 hour challenge on the tiny island that hey this isn't a survival challenge so today we're bringing it to you real we're going to really survive all we have is camp gear and some fishing equipment no water no food no nothing and we're headed out to the tiny island to see if we can survive for 36 hours so stick around it's gonna be an awesome episode let's do it Folks, we have made it to Survivor Island, to Paradise Island, maybe. Water's a little bit lower than last time. I think if you guys remember correctly or haven't seen the video, go back and check it out. We threw the anchor up right there last time, but nevertheless, she's still the same. But this time we have less food. So we're doing a 36 hour challenge this time instead of 24 hour. And last time, obviously, like that was the main comment. It wasn't much of a challenge. It was a little too easy for you guys. So. We brought no water, we brought no food. We're gonna have to salvage, scavenge, forage, and catch everything that we're gonna survive on for the next day and a half. Conditions are just as beautiful. Check it out. This might be one of my favorite places in the world. And here we are. Paradise Island, part two. Oh, I just saw a fish jump. Let's get camp set up. Let's get this challenge started. time to go on the hunt. One thing we are allowing ourselves to use on this trip, other than a couple of camp utilities, is the jet boat. This is gonna be how we find our food, this is gonna be how we kill our food, this is gonna be how we survive, is using this jet boat, but we're still staying on Tiny Island. That's a guarantee. So, what I have set up here, I have two different rods, I have my downrigger rod, and I have my other rod here. We're gonna be fishing some different areas, and we're gonna just go out this evening and try to find some food. If we don't eat tonight, probably not gonna kill us. But tomorrow it will be very important that we find enough food to survive. So let's get the rods down and see if we can find some fish for dinner. some fish from getting on the graph. They're up a little bit shallower than we're set. Right about there. Tighten that up. Get ready for dinner. Oh, there, he's on there. He's on there, went right to him. Oh yeah, he's there, he's there, he's there, he's there. Oh, that's epic. That's epic. The hummingbird depth finder might have saved our lives tonight. We saw him. We brought the line up to him and we caught him. There he is. There he is. Oh, he's a beauty. He's a beaut, Clark. Looks like legal size. <laughs> Five minutes in, we got dinner. There he is. Now this looks like a little landlocked coho. So in this lake, they have landlocked coho salmon from the, the salmon that come up and spawn and then these little babies don't make it back down. So that'd be over eight inches. That is legal size. We got some beautiful dinner here. There he is. There he is. Is he there? 
Saw him on the graph come up and eat the bait. I think he's still there. Yep, oh yeah, he's still there. He's still there. We got fish number two for dinner. We got dinner fish number two. Oh, he's there. Oh yeah. Oh, there's another one below us. We are in, found him right around 80 feet here. Seems like all the fish are almost in the exact same area. So what I really want, one is to catch enough fish for dinner, and two is to catch enough to put in our crawdad trap, because we're gonna find another way to get food while we're out here, and that is a whole nother species. There he is. There's our fish number two. We'll have to give him a measure, but I think he's legal size. Fish home. Got some down there a little bit deeper, guys. Went to 35 feet on that. We're in only in 50 feet of water here. Drop it down a little closer to him. Oh, he's right in it. He went down for it. He's about to hit it. You ready for it? Oh, he's right in it. He's in it. He's swimming with it. You can see it right here on the screen what he did here. He was down low, he was coming up to it, I dropped it down, and he turned and went right down with it, and he's still right in it. So let's watch and see if he gets it. Oh, we got one coming up for it. Really good mark. Oh, he went back down. This is exciting. It's like playing a video game. Oh, they're jumping out here in front of us. We got them all surrounded, guys. We're surrounded by fish. We're surrounded by dinner. Oh, there he is, there he is. We got another one. Got another one. Oh, you said it, little, you said it. Oh, is he still there? Oh, yep, he's still there. Ooh, it feels like a good one. Feels like the best one yet. They're all good ones when you're surviving on the land. What would we do without our Cannon Downrigger and our Minn Kota? Ah. Oh. Wah, 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 wah. Plug rod just got slammed. Oh, he's there. He's there. Oh, yeah, he's there. He's there for sure. Oh, it's a good one, too. It's a good one. Oh God, don't want to rip it out of his mouth here. This is a survival game. He's still there. He's still there, please stay on there. Oh, that's a good one too, it's a rainbow this time. Rainbow this time. Let's make sure he's what? Hatchery clipped. Yep, he's hatchery clipped. That's an eater. <laughs> More dinner. Beautiful rainbow on the Brad's mini wiggler. Yeah, check him out. What a gorgeous trout. Indeed. Count it. Whoa. Oh, God. <laughs> I almost lost him. Oh, he's talking. Just don't eat me. I'm sorry. This is a survival game. We got to eat you. About to get bit here. We got a giant school. Oh, my God. Look at them all. Look at them all, everybody. Right here. Look, it is a massive school of trout around that thing. If that doesn't get bit, there's something wrong with it. I'm gonna check it. Oh, never mind. He's there. There we go. Got him. Got him. We got a follower. He's still there. Feels like it. Oh yeah, he's still there. We got four fish for dinner. We got our fourth fish for dinner, everyone. Okay, here we go. Boat flip. Oh, another beautiful rainbow. Oh, this one's wild though. This one is wild. So this this lake in particular, we can only keep hatchery trout. You can see this one has this little fin on it. So it's definitely a wild, might be a little steelhead smolt. So we're gonna get him right back in the water and he's gone. Woohoo! Yeah! Okay, the night has grown old. It's time we reel our rods in, fillet our dinner, and get our next meal prepared. And what that means is I brought my crawdad trap here, as you see, and this is how we're gonna catch our breakfast. Hopefully we're gonna have a breakfast. If you didn't see the last camping stay fishy, we made a really, really killer crawdad scramble. I don't have the mixins for a scramble tonight because obviously we're doing a survival challenge, but the idea is to get more crawdads. So I'm gonna fly out my trout, stick them in here, and then it'll be anybody's guess to see why it's in here in the morning, so. It's gonna taste good. The body and the soul. There we go. Everything's gonna be reused here. Nothing's going to waste tonight. Okay, so I think this will do. We're at the mouth of this little creek inlet. 
which means there's a lot of nutrients, a lot of bugs and different things getting washed out of this creek. Very rocky bottom. We have a nice stump here to tie off to. Uh, because of course, I forget something every time and today I forgot a buoy. Pretty much just gonna take our paracord that we got here. Got a couple hundred feet of paracord. I'm gonna lay this piece of the bundle just right over the side here so it doesn't get too tangled. Do a couple half hitches around this guy here. And that should hold us through the night. Hopefully there's not so many crawdads in here that carry this thing away. If so, we'll have to dive down there and find them in the morning. Okay, see you later crawdad trap. Good luck. Time for dinner. Well, little else is fed. He's got his dog food. He's eating like a little little prince. And it's time for us to eat like kings because nature provided tonight. And I could not be happier about that. I'm gonna do something a little weird here, which is not probably uncommon for you guys uh, watching this show. Um, but I just, I just came, an epiphany hit me and I think this is gonna work really well. I'm doing a little combo wombo. I'm gonna do my pan inside the little uh, fire grate. I'm gonna take each piece of my beautiful precious trout that I was so luckily granted with tonight. I'm gonna put it right here in the pan, just like so. And I did, as, as a normal survival challenge goes for me, unless you guys wanna see me do like a real, real, real one, which I wanna see the comments below. Like if you wanna see me do an absolutely bare bones, nothing taken with, like alone out in the wilderness, alone style, um, survival challenge. Be sure to comment below and give this video some likes. If you guys get this video up to 10,000 likes, I'll gladly do a two to four to five day survival challenge out in the wilderness with nothing but what somebody gives me to go with, um, whether that be a light or a knife or whatever. That would be a lot of fun. I've, I've something I've always wanted to do. So guys, get this video to 10,000 likes. I don't think it'll be hard to do. These videos have been getting some great views uh, and I'll gladly do that. But tonight for this survival challenge, I brought fishing gear and I brought some seasonings because I'm not gonna survive without it tasting good, obviously. So I got some Worcestershire sauce here. I'm gonna go just a very light drizzle on top of that. Then I'm just doing a little bit of Weber kicking chicken, just like so. Looks good to me. Smells absolutely amazing. Wish we had smell o vision Stick that just like that. And that should cook it. Let's go take a seat by the fire and cook some fish. I think I have an even better idea. Watch this. We're gonna do it pressure cooker style. Cover that thing up, throw it over. Should be done in minutes. Well, I'm drooling. The smell is unreal. It's time to look and see if it's done. Good to me. It's flaking right away from the skin. Oh, the smell is unbelievable. These are some of the most beautiful trout I've caught in a long, long time. Thank you, creator, for this meal. Holy shankies, that's good. Thank you, Mr. Trout, for helping us survive one more day of life. survival meal. Definitely can't complain. Let's enjoy our fire. Well, 
What a perfect afternoon it has been. We were blessed with some food, perfect weather, and tonight is actually one of the peak nights of the Perseids meteor shower. So we're gonna set up a nightscape. I'm gonna have Sean go on the boat, set up a nightscape of the horizon line, and hopefully get some beautiful, beautiful shots of this meteor shower tonight. So with that being said, I'm gonna set up my cot, get my bed ready. You guys enjoy this meteor shower. We'll see you in the morning. Enjoy the stars. <sighs> Good morning, everybody. Last night was incredible, I must say. Shooting stars dead calm all night, crickets creaking, or something like that. But check out this view we woke up to. Just beautiful, glassy goodness. I think it's time we go find some breakfast. But first, we must rock out to Gary Stewart. He taught me the what to do and when. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Eee. Well, found a piece of wood art on my poop mission. That was a close one. The trout was coming back up. But the goal this morning is to find some wild edibles. So we're gonna go check our crawdad trap and then I, what I'm noticing is already, I stopped on this side for my uh, emergency mission, uh, but I'm noticing there's no berries. Uh, and I think it's because this is the leeward side of the sun. So that other side, I can already tell, I can see some blueberry bushes on that side. So we're gonna try that, that sunstruck side first, looking for the berries, uh, but first order of business, let's go check our crawdad trap. Art. Okay, the fateful moment. Do we have breakfast? I have a good feeling about this. This is a pretty primo crawdadly spot. Oh yeah, they're in there. Oh yeah, baby, we're eating good in the neighborhood. Look at the size of these things. Oh my God. Oh my God, we even got us a sculpin. Oh wow, look at these things. Holy shnikes. There is an absolute lobster in here. An absolute lobster. Holy crap. We are feasting. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is so badass. The old food change challenge. We caught food and we used it to catch more food. And that is pretty damn cool if you ask me. All right, let's dump these bad boys out. See what we got here. Better watch my fingers, I might lose one. All right. Look at these things, you guys. Oh, that one's got that sculpin by the head. I'm gonna help this little guy out. Ah, I said let me go! Let me go! I didn't do anything wrong. Look at that one and there's blue. Wow, must be a rare like genetic thing. I just can't get over how big that one is. That is insane. Okay, see you later, Sculpin. If it were more of a desperate challenge, we'd eat those too, but that being said, we got us plenty, plenty of crawdads. Ah, look at that one. I'm colorblind, I can't tell if it's like blue or green, but nevertheless, that is a really interesting looking crawdad. He's cut him right by the mouth, poor guy. Okay, see you later, Sculpin. One more Sculpey. <laughs> Look at him, he's got him by the eyeballs. It's like, finally, I catch you. I catch you. 
All right, though, we gotta look at this guy. Look at the size of that freaking crawdad. Holy shit. That thing is a monster. Oh, we got one more sculpin hiding in here. Get these guys in some water so they stay alive. Cool. That is neat. Those are some giant crawdads. It's gonna be a feast. We need a bigger bucket. Ladies and gentlemen, we are surrounded by food. We got up on the hill here and I looked back down and there's trout everywhere back behind the boat. So well, there's a big one right there, holy crap. There's just little packs of them swimming around eating bugs. Oh, there's even more right here. Oh, that's so badass. That one's huge too to the right. This is gonna be fun. As soon as we get done picking some berries, we're gonna come back down and do some fishing. I don't even know if we'll move the boat because I don't want to spook them. Uh, Cause we're not gonna be able to troll past these things, but maybe we'll get a bobber out there. We'll cast some spinners. See if we can't catch us some trout after we harvest some berries. What a beautiful morning. Here's our first little signs of life. We have some wild raspberries here. Really little ones, but they're food no less. Beautiful little dudes. They might not be raspberries, so correct me if I'm wrong in the comments of what you think these are. I'm seeing a lot of blueberry bushes as well, but it doesn't look like there's many blueberries on them. It looks like they might already have like ripened and fallen off. So we might not get much of a meal up here, but we're obviously getting something. So let's keep going up. Wow. Look at this beautiful area. Got this incredible creek down here below us flowing in. I bet if the sun was shining right, we could see so many trout down here. This little freshwater inlet will hold these fish because the water's a lot colder. And obviously there's food moving down that creek and into the lake, so this could be good. Another nice blueberry bush with no blueberries. Starting to get a little skeptical here. I've heard these ones called huckleberries before, but they're not my favorite huckleberries. And that being said, when you are out foraging and picking berries in, in particular, you can see those, like the red huckleberries. Um, when you're out foraging and picking berries in particular, it's almost like mushrooms at times. It's best to be safe and not eat stuff that you don't know what it is. But in the name of science, I'm gonna try this one. No flavor, no nutrients. Guess we're stuck with our three little berries. Mm. Mm. Those are delicious, no less. We'll go a little bit further, keep our eyes out, but I don't know if there's gonna be many blueberries up here today. It might be at a higher elevation. So I wanna see the comments below too. We're gonna to be doing some huckleberry picking stuff and staying up in the high mountains here in the next couple of weeks. I'm actually going on a road trip out to Aspen. So on that road trip, we're gonna go through some of the desert. We're gonna go way up in the high country, pick berries and mushrooms. So leave some comments below on what you guys wanna see in those episodes, if there's any sort of foraging or any type of berry you wanna see us pick, we'll be sure to try and do it. But until then, let's continue the adventure. Ooh, more raspberries. Sweet. This bush has a few more on it. Mmm, get in my belly. That's some good stuff. Well, we made it quite a ways up here and we're running out of berries. I really came up here for the blueberries and not those raspberries. Those raspberries grow so sparsely that I'm not gonna try to bank on climbing any higher. We've been, I don't know, a thousand yards, 2000 yards from the boat, so I've seen enough. Let's head back down and start fishing. There's a bunch of fish right here behind the boat and you can see them from up on the vantage point. So I have Sean up here on top, kind of calling the shots, telling me where to go. And then I'm casting and these fish, I keep seeing them right over here. So we're gonna start our first cast out this way. Okay, here we go. Get it on this one.
Oh god, I got him! Yeah! <laughs> oh, he's a jumper! Oh, he's a jumper! Oh, that was so badass. So cool. Looks like another little coho. There it is, everyone. We got him. <laughs> Sweet. That was awesome, everyone. Comment below what you think of that. Ow! It bit me. It looks like a keeper. I'm gonna throw him in the bucket. Throw him in the bucket with the crawdads. Oh, he doesn't like that. Oh, they don't like that. He doesn't like that. Oh, they're gonna get him. <laughs> Crawdad versus trout. Crawdad versus trout. All right, let's do it again. Got him. Got him. Oh, lost it. Dang it, had a second one on. Got the same size. This is cool, everybody. This is so cool. Okay, I'm gonna try one out of another direction here. Got two good biters in that bunch. Maybe there'll be more over here. Oh my God, that thing almost ripped the rod out of my hand. Did you guys see that? That was a big trout. Holy smokes. How did he not stay on? Instant replay. Oh my God, that thing almost, the thing damn near took the rod right out of my hands. I was kind of not prepared, honestly. Oh, I just had him again. Dang, I'm getting bit almost every cast. The lure I chose is a good old fashioned Panther Martin, chartreuse, silver blade, one of my very favorites. Okay, I'm gonna go a little bit further left this time. Dang it, missed those opportunities there. Got him, that's a good one too. Got him, oh heck yeah. Oh, that's a better one, that's a rainbow for sure. I could, oh, he let it go. Dang it. That was a really nice rainbow, everybody. Oh, got it all on the, on the uphill camera. Man, that thing had some beautiful red color to it. Damn it. Oh, they're following it. Oh, he's, got, oh, he's coming. Oh, that was a big one too. Damn it. That was a big one. We need to be a little deeper, I think. Oh! Oh, he's oh, 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 going. That one's huge. Oh, he was going ape shit on it. That was a good one too. Damn it. It is so neat, everybody, to be able to watch these fish down there like this. The water is so crystal clear. I bet there's 20 foot of viz right now. When we pulled in here, it was like 18 feet deep right here off the bank, 12 to 18 feet. So to be able to see all the way to the bottom and watch these fish react to my lure is probably one of the coolest things imaginable when it comes to trout fishing. Any sort of visual fishing when you're trout fishing is, is kind of as good as it gets. Well, man, they are everywhere in here. There's fish jumping all around us. Okay, everyone, I think it's time for a lure change. They've caught, they kinda, they kinda got onto me here. They know what's going on, so I'm gonna switch up. Still do a Panther Martin, but I'm going to the black body gold blade. Let's see if that makes us a difference. Oh, that was a good one too, that was a big one. All those ones that are red like that, you guys, are, it seems to be the biggest rainbows. And they're ones that uh, probably have been in here quite a while, so let's hope we can land one of those, just mainly so we can get a look at it. They're such cool looking trout. We got plenty of food for this afternoon, obviously, so don't want to over harvest if we don't need to, but it would be nice for the camera guy to eat too. Okay, I think it's about time we go up into the creek, put on a bobber, see if we can catch these things another way.
Okay, I think it's time we switch gears. I got my bobber rod, my little jig on here. Let's go see what this creek has to offer. Holy shit, that's cold. Ooh, more art. It's a fish whacker. Yikes. Okay, here it goes, everybody. Found this beautiful hole. Let's see if there's any trout in it. Try this inside line first. Okay, I'm gonna go a little deeper on this next cast. Didn't get anything on that one. Well, it doesn't seem to be any fish in this pool. Before we leave, I'm gonna try one more method. I'm gonna use my little micro worms and see if I can find a fish. I don't know how much farther up this creek we're gonna go. I'm gonna try one more hole up, but this water is so frigid cold, it's hard to walk in, so I'm not gonna really strain ourselves too much going way up here. It's a beautiful little area, but I might try one more hole after we try the worm in this one and see if we can catch a fish. Hi. It is. Oh, I just saw one take it. I felt it in the line. That was a huge one too. Okay, I think the worm's gonna get him. That was a really good trout. He hit it and spit it out so fast the bobber never even went down. There he is. Oh, I missed him. Son of a gun. Dang it. There he is, got him, finally. <laughs> I knew I could do it. I knew it could happen. Woo! Wasn't as big as I thought he was, but it's a trout. Oh, Jesus. It is a trout, no less. This one's a wild one now, so we're not gonna be able to keep it, but it was fun all the same. What a beauty. There he is. Got him on the worm. Okay, see you later, little dude. Woohoo, we did it! Got him. Oh, it's a good one too. Yes. Yes. Oh, it's a really good one. Oh, that was such a beautiful bobber down. Oh, what a pretty trout. Let's bring him over here. All right, little. Let's get this one to the bank. Oh, yeah. Look at that beautiful trout. Wow, the colors and the spots. They're so fresh and healthy in this creek. But I think I'm gonna let this one go. Oh, oh. We got that big trout in there and we got the little coho and we got all those crawdads, which is gonna be plenty to eat today. Next thing I think we need to do is find some fresh water. There's a little spring right behind me. I think we're gonna get a couple handfuls from, but that was a badass trout and a badass bobber down. Took a couple casts yet again, but we got him. Got him. Oh yeah, oh it's a cutthroat. This one's a cutthroat. <laughs> this is a totally different species. You can tell he has this huge, huge mouth, like, like a salmon mouth almost. I'm gonna bring him down. 
exact same spot. He's fighting a lot different too. They're all piled up right in that little boil. Oh yeah, no, it's a bull trout. Come here, bud, come here, come on, come on. We're gonna do our best. We're not gonna take this one out of the water because it's illegal to, but there it is, a bully. Look at that thing. Look at the colors down the spine. Giant mouth. These things are built to eat. And look at how he's like iridescent here, like almost almost like shiny. And then you turn him and he's got those beautiful orange spots. Shark fin on the back, little white fin tips. Hooked him perfectly there, it came right out. Okay, little dude, see you later. This is such an awesome day. Let's see some comments below on what you think of this challenge here. I know I am enjoying this one more than any of them yet. And this is like the true survival challenge too. We just picked a good place. So once again, I wanna see some comments on areas and locations and type of environment you wanna see us do these kind of trips and these kind of survival challenges. So today was one of my favorite areas and it worked out great. All right, it's time we hang it up. I'm getting hungry. And I think just because this creek is so clear and so pristine, I think I'm just gonna drink some water right out of it. It's not recommended to drink water out of mountain creeks like this because there are animals up here, but there's no cows. There could be some, some wild animals like deer or elk that, are, that might be you know, peeing or pooping in the river that might cause some sort of bacteria, but I'm too thirsty to care right now, so I'm gonna drink a little bit out of the creek. Woo, that's cold. All right, back to the boat. It's just the weirdest looking crawdad. The thing is blue. I wonder if it's gonna taste any different. Such a trip. Okay, so for flavor, garlic powder to the water before it boils. A little bit of just steak seasoning. A little bit of salt in there. It's gonna give these things really nice flavor. There we have it, lobster dinner. Hard to complain with that meal. Now oh, that's delicious. What a treat. I wanna get every little bit of meat out of these as I can. I think what I'm gonna do is save the trout for lunch because after we're done eating these crawdads, we have some more exploring to do and we still have an entire day to self-sustain. So. That being said, let's chow. Save the best for last. <laughs> what a meal. Just look at this thing. And I've seen people eat the heads of these things before everybody, but they kind of gross me out. So I want to see some comments below from you Southerners out there or your crawdad enthusiasts that like to, they call it sucking the head. Um, it's not something I'm really like partial to or would really want to do, but honestly, it's the same, like I did the same thing with um, Dungeness Crab. You take the head off, it's called eating the, what do they call it? The butter. You take it off, the head, turn, turn it over, you mix it up, and that is one of the most tasty things I've ever had in my life. But the, uh, the heads of the crawdads are something I have not really embarked on that journey, so look at that chunk of meat. Mmm, protein. Yeah, I don't think I want to suck on that. Let's check out these claws. Wow. Mmm. That is unreal. Okay, let's see how the blue one tastes. Mmm. Like a crawdad.
just decided to kind of venture into this little inlet here. Absolutely gorgeous. Really just wanted to see if there's any more creeks like the one that we caught fish in that were draining into the lake. So sounds like that one does have some water drizzling down it, but it's awfully small. So I think we'll just admire from afar. What a tree. struck five and that means we've been out here for 36 hours so I'm ready to go home and get me a burger nonetheless I want to thank you guys so much for being here on this adventure today it was a really fun one and we had such a good time making it I probably said this is one of my favorite episodes I've made so far and I want to see your guys' feedback the other 24 hour challenge on this exact same island did so well and that's why we came out and did it again so let that be known if you guys get this video to 10,000 likes once again I'll start doing these survival videos where we use nothing at all just our bare hands and whatever we can come up with to survive on out here in the wilderness. So with that being said, until next week, same time, same place, you all stay fishy, we'll see you out there. All right, let's go home.